The Walt Disney World theme parks are in need of major assistance. Many of them have significant problems, even despite attendance not being terrible. And yet, folks seem to walk away from the Disney World experience, saying, according to one recent survey, that it is the biggest ripoff in North America. Today, we're looking at Disney's Hollywood Studios, fixing it for them with an ongoing series where we dive into how to save the Disney World theme parks. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Pro Channel. Boy, oh boy, do we have a video for you. And joining us to do so is Vash Sky of That Park Place and Lorena Creole of the Lorena Creole YouTube channel. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Hey, we are happy to be here. And I think uh, I think this sound is actually very applicable to this park. Am I right? New Hollywood right? Studios. Yes, I, I recall it quite well. And uh, folks, as we get into this, let me just tell you, this is probably the toughest park to fix. And one of the frustrating things about trying to fix Hollywood Studios is it has had so much money pumped into it in such a an utterly inefficient way. Uh, I dare say a very stupid way. Let's get into why that is exactly. Folks, we bring you the data. So if you are a Disney Parks aficionado, you do not want to miss this video. Click like as we dive in right now with the data out of thrilldata.com. All right, panelists, here's what we're looking at. Uh, clearly, the biggest problem that Disney's Hollywood Studio uh, Studios has, it has no rides. It just has nothing to do. There's This is... This is a terrible situation for the park because after billions of dollars poured in, there's nothing to do. Let's go through it real quick. Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. What we're looking at here, by the way, are wait times. Now, why are wait times on average this high? Because you got to do something. And if there's if there's very little to do and there's some number of people in the, in the theme park and they're buying up genie passes, then the average wait time is going to go way, way up. All right, so Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Count them with me, okay? That's one ride. Slinky Dog Dash, two rides. Millennium Falcon, Smuggler's Run, three rides. I feel like the count right now. <laughs> Twilight Zone, Tower of Terror, four rides. Oh, oh, oh. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, five rides. Toy Story Mania, six rides. Alien Swirling Saucers. This is generous to call this a ride. Seven rides. It's, it's half a quarter of the Dumbo experience. Star Tours, the adventure continues eight rides and here's where things get a little bit interesting meet disney stars at the red carpet dreams I, guys is that a ride that's not a ride no that's a that's a meet and greet right that's just a, yeah you know. okay character still, still at eight rides star wars launch bay meet chewbacca sorry that, that's not a ride mm -mm. That's, right that's still no. eight rides meet olaf Sorry, that's not a ride. We're still at eight rides. Walt Disney Presents, which is a museum. Not a ride. Mm -mm. Still at eight rides. Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy. This, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it an attraction. <laughs> it's not, not something I think anybody is pining to go see. Not uh, to if you've seen great. it once, it's sufficient. Yeah. But nine. We're at nine attractions. Is that fair? Am I, am I counting this correctly? Mm -hmm. All right, Muppet Vision 3D, a theater, and good luck ever filling it, uh, but 10, 10 attractions, Vacation Fun, an original, no, 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 what? no, no, I'm not counting a Disney Plus short you put into the Sounds Dangerous Theater, I'm not doing it, I'm sorry, that is the laziest thing I've ever seen, and then, I don't know what this is, Hollywood Studios, apparently it's the wait to get into the theme park. So that would be right now available. Okay, right now. Right. You'll notice that Rock and Roller Coaster is not there because it's not available. Right now, if you go into Hollywood Studios, 10. There are 10 things to do in the entire day. Now, here's, here's the map of uh, Hollywood Studios. And um, Hollywood Studios, for those who don't know, this is an old map. It's what Google Earth is still using. Sure. It still has uh, Galaxy's Edge under construction. That cost a lot. Uh, Toy Story Land is done over here. That cost a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, problem is, they built on top of areas that were already there. So this was Streets of America once upon a time. This didn't add very much to us. 
this once upon a time over here, all this parking lot was supposed to be Galaxy's Edge. It was supposed to be connected to this area here, which is the Galactic Star Cruiser, now closed <laughs> down. Maybe it houses all the Rose Tico dolls in the world. Who knows? Hard to say. <laughs> uh, it's like Area 51. Nobody knows. Nobody gets close to it. But uh, because of the way they built this, uh, with Toy Story Land here and uh, Galaxy's Edge here, mm -hmm. the park is enclosed. So they have all the land in the world in Florida, and they landlocked a <laughs> theme park of their own doing. Like there's there there was never a reason. They had all this land over here. Look at all this land. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They literally landlocked it. And even if you were to get rid of the parking lot now, to show you this, well, come on, participate with me, uh, Google Earth. Even if you get rid of the parking lot, you say, okay, we're going to add stuff over there. Mm -hmm. To get there, you're still going to have to destroy the backstage. Uh, what's this? What's the name of this? Hang on, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking now. What's the name of the, the restaurant here? Is that the Actually, back lot? Back lot, not okay. backstage. Come on, pro. Back lot cafe. Um, you got to take it up. Back lot express. You got to take that out to put a pathway, and then you're going to have uh, vision into Indiana Jones. And then you're going to make the perimeter road go through the parking lot back down. It. Anyway, it's a pain in the butt. And there's really no other place to expand. You can, you can, okay, so if you have to expand down here near Fantasmic, you could relocate trailers and get a ride down here uh, next to Tower of Terror. You could also put, a, a, you could put a teeny weeny something uh, behind the Beauty and the Beast uh, stage show. That's it. They have, they have locked a park that has tons of land all around it. They've locked it in where you can't expand. So we have our work cut out for us. I want to start off with Lorena. Uh, Lorena, what are some of your ideas to fix Hollywood Studios after all of this money poured into it and after it still remains, in my opinion, the worst Disney World theme park? Uh, man. Well, I will say this, keep Toy Story Land exactly the way that it is with one caveat, expand Woody's lunch box because it is way too crowded. The food is so good, but there's not really a whole lot of room to room to sit. Toy Story Land is always full of activity. I mean, right. with all the things that they have with you know, the green army men coming through there, which brings me to um, one improvement. Bring back the quote unquote streetmosphere character. Yes, please. Because this is supposed to be a studio. So you should feel like the Hollywood that, you know, that never, um, that never was. So you'd have like the casting directors, you'd have, you know, the tour of the stars homes, you know, that kind of, um, that kind of feel where people get to meet the char the Disney characters from the Disney films, you know, that, um, that they love so much. I would love to see um, Max from uh, a goofy movie. I mean, they have a little, um, not cavalcade, but like a pre-show for Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, where that's all they did. They had Max out there. They had all these dancers. It was like Disney Channel from the 90s, and people ate that up. So I would say definitely bring those experiences back because it provides that, it kind of provides like that human connection to the park and to the characters, you know, as well, and kind of builds up, builds excitement. So that's one thing that I would do. The second thing that I would do is bring more Broadway style shows like the Beauty and the Beast show. Um, every time I've gone there, you have like the great songs that you remember, um, you know, from the movie and people like experiencing those moments. Kids like seeing those, you know, characters and the songs from the film so they can you know sing it you know sing it along together i i would like it if they actually did lion king one and a half on stage so that's something you know that they can do because families when they come to disney not many people can go to see a broadway show on broadway but you go to walt disney world you have the perfect opportunity to experience that and add that value on it's like yeah we saw like 10 broadway shows in a week but you know we were right there at the uh at that one spot uh the other one let's see uh 
rock and roller coaster. I, I really wish they would knock that down and put in like a true adrenaline type of a uh, coaster with the Hollywood. Uh, but the, it doesn't necessarily have to be a Hollywood theme. I keep thinking uh, Tower Terror, but we already got one for um, for that. But a really a serious thrill coaster that yeah. could compete with the likes of say the Velocic coaster because. The reason why is Tower Terror, that's amazing. That drop, it's, well, multiple. I've been on there when it's dropped like six times and people like love it. So you can't get a thrill like that in the park the way that it is right now. So I would say definitely um, they need to plus up that experience uh, over there. And Some people and have suggested that Queen might, might be a uh, proper replacement to Rock and Roller Coaster. Which one? That could be an option. Queen, the uh, band? Yes. Oh, 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 okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> <laughs> you, might have to, you might have to write it three times to get that full song through. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I love those suggestions, Lorena. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, one last one. Um, bring the Muppets out for real. Yes, that and would be very nice to get actual... You know, I, I enjoyed the puppets when they were at uh, Liberty Square. I, I, I did know, too. That was awesome. Crowds formed for that. It was great. Uh, I wish if if they can't come back to Magic Kingdom, I, I agree with you. Put them somewhere over here uh, in the Muppets courtyard. So fully on board with that. Vash, yep. uh, you've got, again, this is tough. It is it really hard because of all the <laughs> terrible decisions that have been made that have that have just made it almost impossible to add capacity and to find ways to get, you need more attractions. There's not enough to do here. Vash, what would you do to fix it? You do need more attractions. I mean, desperately to, and, and I, I, uh, I agree how many attractions does bro. Disneyland proper have Vash? Oh my goodness. Uh, well over 30. I mean, it's, uh, in the forties, I think if you count up all the little, so at least quadruple, at least quadruple what yeah. this park has to give people yeah. perspective of why we're saying there, there's not enough to do. There's just, this doesn't justify going unless you want to wait two hours for a star Wars ride. Right. Right. And, and that's, that's, that's simply not sustainable. So I agree with, uh, Lorena's assessment. I do think we need some more, uh, Broadway style shows. I would actually do probably like a Hyperion, uh, a, a large, uh, custom built theater uh, with a capacity of about Ooh. 2000 or so and consolidate some of these productions within that as maybe like a, uh, a flex space uh, daily that can that can house multiple of these shows and then we can kind of start maybe doing something with the footprints that exist for the shows that uh, are, are there now I think Indiana Jones has kind of seen its day here. I, I understand it's a, it's, it's a, <laughs> well, they killed the that's... franchise. We all admit they killed the franchise. It'll, right. It'll be no fun to see it go. It's been there. It's been there for so long, but at the same time, they killed the franchise. It's dead. And back in the, back in the nineties when evaluating this park, this was always a plot to expand on back in the day. It was going to be Indiana Jones adventure at one point. Obviously that didn't necessarily happen because Indiana Jones is going to be maybe located in animal kingdom. Maybe this provides us an opportunity to rethink this area, and we can push, a, uh, you know, the bounds I'm gonna, of I'm this I'm going to push back on you, Vash. I, I think, I think what we'll wind up getting is uh, the the much lesser version of of what Disneyland has. We're going to get the Phoebe Waller Bridge experience. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> no well, <not> again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that's terrible. Well, but we need this land here. This is for sure. This is prime real estate, and that parking lot, like I said, is also prime real estate. You might have to, you know, relocate a lot of that parking via parking garage or something like that. But this area here, I think this is the way to go here. And honestly, Iger, we got to get those Marvel rights back. Ideally, in a world where we have those Marvel rights, I think we push a real for real Avengers campus right here and through oh, that area right I there. Love that. E Avengers Z ticket, the one we're getting at DCA, this is day one attraction right here. Um, maybe we plus things out a little bit. 
if not the Spider-Man attraction, maybe the Ant-Man shooter that they have over there in Hong Kong. Does Iron Man get his own attraction? Does he take over Star Tours? All those things can be evaluated right there, but we need attractions in this space. It needs to be something with at least three or four attractions for stuff to do. Avengers Campus, for real this time, on that plot right there. I would also put in the restaurant that was supposed to be in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. The plot actually exists there. If you look up, you'll probably see a square in <laughs> right next to Oga's Cantina. That's where that restaurant was going to be. That needs to go in. Maybe that third attraction also can be developed. Uh, Star Wars Galaxy Edge as it currently exists is kind of made for it. It just needs to be necessarily implemented. So uh, that stuff well, we can Wars do is also going to have to be more popular. You know, so that's well, another yeah. thing that, that needs to happen is if you're going to add to a huge land devoted to a, uh, to a major part of your company, it's got to pull its weight. And uh, what it we does. saw with Disneyland is when Star Wars was added to Disneyland, right? Project yeah. Stardust, there was a decrease in attendance. We've never seen that before when a yes. new land is added and you actually saw a decrease in uh, people going. That that was that was also, something else. We can help and we can help that too by bringing back Star Wars weekends. Why don't we have Star Wars weekends anymore? Oh, Why are we constraining ourselves to yeah. this timeline? Let's awesome. break ourselves from that timeline. Let's put in some more stuff to do via that third ride or that restaurant that they talked about uh, uh, at those uh, Imagineering conferences there. And let's put in Star Wars weekends again. Let's get Jedi Training Academy back on fully operational. Let's get hyperspace hoopla and all that. Let's get the fun back in Star Wars again. I think that would uh, go a long way in re reinvigorating our recent investment. Vash, can we just say that not having Luke Skywalker, uh, Princess Leia, Han Solo, etc. available for a meet and greet, that's like owning the rights to Batman, but you won't do Batman. It's, instead, you have it's like, so weird. Yeah, it, it, this... We're not going there, folks. I'm not going there. They've got over half a million dislikes on the Acolyte. Fair enough. Let's <laughs> Wait a minute. We, we have doing DC. a video every day on this thing, man. We have the DC rights, but we're not going to do Superman or Batman. We're going to do Hawkman and... I don't know, Green Lantern version Aquaman. four. It's so Great weird. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Let me cool. tell you guys what I would do, and then you you assess uh, uh, what you think about this. Again, folks, this is the hardest park, and it should not be. They've spent billions to quote unquote upgrade it, and it it holds it has less rides today than I think than than in perhaps since it opened. It's, it's right. Ridiculous. All right. So let's go through this. First of all, we have an expansion pad. That is over here behind the Sunset Strip. Uh, we've got to remove a uh, storage building, office space, but we can put an, an attraction here. It can be a smaller attraction. Uh, some people in the past have suggested you could do a traditional dark ride, and like from Fantasyland, I'm cool with that. Totally fine. I would recommend doing a dark ride that can be moved based on, or, or the, the sets can be easily changed out so that you constantly have it changing. It could be a nice right, seasonal like, piece. Like that's, a black box type me. attraction. Gotcha. Ah. Yep. I would also take the road. I would connect the pathway from Animation Studios across here, uh, straight over to the bathrooms uh, of, of Rock and Roller Coaster. So you've got that all connected together. So there's another outlet uh, to get people through there. I like that. Lightning McQueen uh, over here. Lightning McQueen is, is fine, but it's just not pulling enough people. So change right. it out, do something better with that theater. Mm -hmm. Over here, sounds dangerous, but I would take this and uh, change it into a game show. This has been something that's been sort of a staple of Hollywood Studios in its past. Put a game show with a live audience there, give away some little prizes for people who win at the game show, uh, make it fun. If you want to put it on Disney Plus for fun, cool with me, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to leave Indy alone, and the reason I'm going to leave Indy alone is because it has tremendous capacity, huge capacity. Massive. And right now, Hollywood True. Studio. What's that? Oh, I said true. It's yes, it's yes. A well, crazy amount of people. Services thousands of people uh, per showing. I, I I debated this one. The yep. only the only reason I ever touched it is because I think we can duplicate that. Uh, it's got to have it's, and, you, you got to have capacity. And so here's yeah. what I'm going to do to add the capacity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, one other thing, real quick. Um, over here in Animation Courtyard, we've got this giant space that's attached yeah. to the Animation Building that Watch is currently that. used mm -hmm. for absolutely nothing. This entire space is used to meet Chewie and to host a few posters. Get Star Wars out of there and put something in it. I don't even care what you put in there. I, don't, mm -hmm. I just don't care. It's that. Anyway. All right. Unfortunately, we're going to uh, tear out the Backlot Express. I like it. I've eaten there 
many, many, many times. It's got to go. It's in the way. And we're going to open a pathway back here into the cast parking lot. And we're going to uh, allow that also to have access behind the Muppets Courtyard, um, where the very old last remaining vestige of where uh, Galaxy's Edge was supposed to go is mm. still back there for those folks who want to see it. But we're going to have these two paths that connect. Uh, to make up for the fact of we're losing a uh, cast parking lot, we're going to build a uh, cast parking garage right here on Absolutely. this square. This is where the uh, parking garage originally was supposed to go anyway. Three or four mm -hmm. levels, fine by me. doesn't matter because on this side that you're looking at, right, this side over here, it's going to be covered by a facade. And why is that? Because I'm going to put two pathways, okay, two pathways. So we've got two outlets, one going to the... Uh, Left of Star Tours building, over where ba Backlot Express is, one uh, connection with the Muppets Animation Courtyard to Toontown. And you can do a Roger Rabbit style Toontown that uh, has wow. a connection to a cartoon version of Hollywood. And you can put in spinners and you can That's put in bad. fun rides, a little roller coaster. You need capacity. Yep. Yes, the perimeter road for maintenance access and all of that is going to have to go around here now and then come down to connect so that you've got a parade route for your floats to get around the park. Um, so that's going to be a pain for security and everybody, but you got to do it. You ha you have to do it. Uh, and the other issue is because of the insanity of uh, how all this was done, you're also going to have to have really tall buildings in Toontown to block the floating rocks and the massive buildings over here uh, from sight lines. If you're walking around Toontown, that would be over here but you have to have more capacity. This theme park, you can't charge people. Listen, let me say it again. You cannot charge people $200 a day for 10 total rides. And yeah. not all of, listen, listen. Alien Saucers, I love you. If you are <laughs> older than two years old, this is not a ride. This is just not, I mean, okay. Slinky Dog's a real ride. Uh, Alien Saucers, not. So, that's my solution, uh, guys. Critique away. Let me know where I'm wrong. The only thing, well, you're not wrong, but I like the alien saucers. <laughs> I'm, gonna admit, I'm so gonna admit to that. I think what I what I like. Wait, 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 Lorena, Lorena. I if I put if I put the the teacups for Magic Kingdom beside alien saucers, which one do you get on? Oh no, no question. Especially the, you know the tea You don't cups. really like, Shoot, you don't really like yeah. saucers, then you just you <laughs> ride it because it's, it's all there is. <laughs> I, I I ride it because I just I just thought it was cool. And okay, and I, okay, wait a minute. I wait like minute. the Lorena. little green aliens. Lorena, yeah. what? Magic teacup or magic uh, carpets of a, of Aladdin in Adventureland versus alien saucers. Which one's oh, better? Oh no, I, I'll take the alien saucers. I'm not a oh. fan. I'm not a fan of the magic carpet. Well, Dumbo how about did we just first. move it over? Dumbo did it first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get it out yeah. of Adventureland. It doesn't belong there. Uh, no. <laughs> I like the Toontown concept. I really do. And for multiple reasons. One, it doesn't take up that much space. If you look at Disneyland's Toontown, obviously this version will be bigger. But uh, if you look at Disneyland's Toontown, it doesn't, didn't take up that much space. And it sits right next to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland. Can we necessarily duplicate the ways to mitigate, uh, you know, a... Uh, 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 the the crossover of visuals from Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, I think we can effectively. I but I would move that I would move that to parking garage pro even even uh, outside of where you necessarily yeah, set go, it. Go you know, that green space right there. We we got to make sure that we don't have this problem happen again. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. The uh, mm -hmm. if you did a Toontown here, of course, many of the rides that are at Disneyland and Toontown are already in this park. That's oh, true. Mickey's <laughs> Runaway Railway is somewhere, you know, it's where the great movie yep. ride was. Yeah. But what you mm -hmm. could do is you could do a new ride where you go through like so many of the classic Disney animation movies and do like a metaverse kind of thing with that. And that, that would be a lot of fun to see a mm. crossover, right? Sort of like what we see with uh, PhilharMagic. Uh, you could do that sort of a thing where you have all the characters coming together. That would be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, let, let the Imagineers be creative. Let them do that once again because... Uh, you know, turning Splash Mountain into a rainforest cafe explosion is not using their creativity to the fullest, I would say. No, no. And actually, I'm glad you brought up Toontown because one of the things that I remember before they got rid of it, they used to have at the Magic Kingdom Minnie's house 
Mickey's house, Donald's house. And there were so many of these little things that you could do. I remember Minnie's house, there was some kind of, not animatronic, but a visual effect that looked like the cake, you know, like blew up and, and it was just fun looking at all the sight gags and, you know, quote unquote notes and things that were left around with that neighborhood. I would love to see something like that come back at Hollywood Studios. So, Lorena is referring to Mickey's birthday land, which was at Magic Kingdom, replaced by Storybook Circus later, for those of you who don't, don't remember back to that time. You know, uh, one of the ideas for Toontown at Disneyland that my old uh, host used to have, and I think this is a great idea, we'll have to adapt it a little bit because it's in proximity of children and whatever, can we get an ink and paint bar that we see from Roger Rabbit, oh. you know, couldn't that be cool and sort of augment our food and, uh, food and drink program? That could be something as well. I, I'm totally up for that. I would love to, you know, they would have to be able to get the rights again to use Roger Rabbit. I don't know that they want to, but uh, you know, it's always been just an absolute crying shame that, that Roger Rabbit did not stick around, that we didn't get a, a sequel and all of that. And, and mm -hmm. I know they destroy everything. <laughs> I guess I keep forgetting this. So maybe I shouldn't want Roger Rabbit to come back, but please, I could go for it. I'll, I'll go nice. with Roger Rabbit. You know. Nice. Uh, Guys, if we do get a Toontown, can we get a, uh, if they're going to do beverages like at uh, the cantina, can we do the dip? Oh, yeah. Are you brave oh, enough to do Gotta have the dip, yeah. Have that's dip. number one for sure. Spicy. All right, folks, it's time for you to join in now. Drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts on what you would do with Hollywood Studios. Do you agree or disagree that this park, in spite of all the investment, still needs the most work? We'd love to hear your opinion on it. Also, Vash Sky is over at That Park Place. You should be subscribed. Fantastic content. And Vash is co-anchor of That Park Place Live, which is Thursdays at noon Eastern. Lorena, tell us what you've got coming up on your channel where you are covering the theme parks almost every day. Oh, yes. Well, thank you. Well, coming up over on my channel, of course, I've got the Spice Lounge show on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, where we talk about pop culture, gaming, what's going on in the sphere. And of course, uh, Vash also appears on the channel as well, helping me out with the show. And of course, Saturdays at uh, 10 a.m. Eastern, this Saturday, um, no, actually, no, it's not this Saturday because it's Easter weekend. Good Friday. I will be at the Magic Kingdom at 9 a.m. And we're going to go. Are you going to go find the Easter rabbit? Is the Easter bunny going to be at the Magic Kingdom on Good Friday? I don't know, but I will be on the lookout for them because I have seen them on previous <laughs> trips. So, yeah, I will be looking for them because I'm getting Easter treats and everything while uh, while I'm there and bringing everyone along with me. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll be on the hunt for, uh, for the bunny. <laughs> very, very cool. And folks, we still have two parks left to go in fixing Walt Disney World. Epcot and Magic Kingdom. Uh, Magic Kingdom. Epcot is up next. And uh, wow, again, lots of money spent, little advantage gained. Like, share, subscribe on this video, folks. And wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing. And as always, keep having fun. I just found out to get WDW Pro's information. Where he gets his sources. I can't believe he uses it. Wilton! Wilton! Listen. We, we got a job to do. Or, uh, it's, it's easy to hack into WDW Pro's uh, computer. You're kidding me. That's awesome. You know where you have stuff? Yeah, just uh, jo Jonas Campbell told me. Sweet. Said Pro underpaid him or something. A few minutes later. All I gotta do is uh, hack into this thing. It's, it's gonna be so easy. Yeah, this is right, gonna hack. Right, uh, grab this uh, picture over here. Leave it to me. <laughs> oh, oh, no.
up. Oh, Wilson. Job done. Uh, what? No, all we had to do was use the picture because he uses face unlock. Now we gotta go to thatparplace.com and sub to him and his team on YouTube. Oh, well, uh, I already did that because I'm smart. Uh, <laughs>